You see those mic plugs? You plug the microphone into input number one, and it goes to fader number one on the console. Input number two goes to fader number two, okay? Now, the microphone input on the console has a microphone preamplifier in it. And the reason for that is microphone level is very, very weak. Consequently, when we plug a microphone into those three pin XLRs, they go to a microphone preamp in the console. And the microphone preamp wants to see this very weak signal because it amplifies that very weak signal up to what's called line level. Line level is what goes through the circuitry. If you have a uh, guitar, what comes out of your guitar is line level. You know, before the amplifier, it's line level. If you have a uh, CD player and you're going to take the output and plug it into your stereo system, that's line level. It's already line level. But microphones are not that strong. Let's just equate line level with a fire hose. Big time, strong, hook up to the fire hydrant, you know, blow you away, right? Okay, and let's equate microphone level to a half-inch garden hose, which is the small one. The energy level is different, right? So, I may have a uh, bass that I want to take the direct output of that bass and record it directly without a microphone. We can do that. But the problem is that coming out of the bass is line level. And I can't plug line level into those microphone inputs or it'll go to that microphone preamp and blow it up. It's just like, okay, we take that half inch garden hose and we get some duct tape and duct tape it to the fire hose and then go turn the fire hose on and watch what happens to that little garden hose. You know, can you imagine? Boom, it's spinning all over, right? Well, that's what would happen and it would blow up your preamp just like it would blow up the garden hose, you know? So, we can't do that. Well, if we were going to have to do that, we have a thing called a direct box. And a direct box is a little device that's got a transformer in it. What it does is it'll take that line level and transform it down to microphone level. So I could then plug my bass into this little box, and it's got another little plug that'll go right into the amp because that just goes right straight through the box. But now, then it takes another little piece of that and goes to a transformer, and then the other side of the transformer has the plug on it that is 3-pin XLR. So I can take that now and plug it into a mic input, and it's mic level. And it doesn't hurt the preamps, because this box with the transformer in it stepped it down to that level. Then we have the tie lines. They go in, and they are in the patch bay. What that means is, if I have somebody comes in with their whole MIDI rack, which used to happen all the time when I worked in the studios, they would come in with a couple of racks full of stuff and one keyboard, and they'd control everything from those racks. And in those racks would be a mixer. They'd have all their stuff go into that mixer so that they could just put, give you two outputs. And now I've got the signal that's coming out of this rack of equipment in here going in there through that panel, going to the patch bay and going straight to the tape recorder, or I could put it in in the mixer if I wanted to, I could take and get two channels in the mixer and put it into line input there. And then I've got the output there, I could pan them left and right and EQ it if I wanted to and then send it to whatever track I wanted to on the tape recorder. You follow? So we have the ability to tie this room into that room with tie lines, that's why they're called tie lines. Because I can get from here into there through that. And on the patch bay in that room there are 24 more tie lines, different tie lines, that go up the wall over and they go into that room and are hooked into that patch bay. And from that patch bay there are 16 more tie lines that go up into the room and they're hooked into the patch bay in that control room. So all three control rooms are actually tied together with tie lines in the patch bay. So I can send audio to all of the three control rooms. I could send that MIDI rack right here I could take that MIDI rack, take the output of their mixer, send it into that control room, patch those tie lines into tie line one and two going into that control room, take the tie lines from there, patch it into that control room and record it in that control room if I wanted to. You follow? Now I'm going to say the bottom part of this panel is, uh, it's not hooked up. Yeah, so I got two B and C cables on the left 
Those are video lines. I got a video going in and a video, you know, in other words, I can use either one for either. One goes in, one comes out. And then I've got two MIDI cables. One goes in, one comes out. If I needed to send a different signal, they, what if this person out here with this MIDI rack wants to send me audio plus MIDI because they're going to use my thing in there and lock Pro Tools with their MIDI time code. So there's two MIDI cables right there to do that if that's what they want to do. Then there's two sync cables, which says I can send Simpty time code from here into there, and on the second one I could send it from there into here. So if I had to send it back and forth for some reason, the plugs are there in the panel when someday I decide to hook them up. But all I got to do is hook it up. <laughs>